Welcome to episode 10 of Mitts Off. Yes, we made it to 10 episodes. Let's go. One of the best power forwards in the game and one of my favorite players in the league, bringing back old school hockey one game at a time. Ottawa Senators captain Brady Kachuk is on the pod. Mitts Off is powered by Sports Interaction, our exclusive betting partner. Get in the action, download the app with all new features to get started. 19 plus and please play responsibly. Mitts off episode 10. You can already see I'm smiling. I cannot contain my excitement. Our first captain on the pod, Ottawa Senators captain Brady Chuck took some time out of his day to join us. Thanks for coming on the Mitts off pod, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. I'm really excited about it. I got to just jump into this conversation about you, man. Like you are such a throwback in the league and it's so much fun to watch, not only for me, but for fans. Like I feel like that role, that power forward role is something that's influenced, right? Like goal scoring is one thing, wanting to be a goal scorer. Everyone wants to score goals and score those big time goals, but not a lot of guys want to do the dirty work, you know, be physical, hit guys, run guys, fight guys. Is that something you like developed over time when you were hanging around with your dad at the rinks? Was there someone you fell in love with watching or like as you were growing up, like where did you kind of begin to start to play like that? That's a great question. Cause you know, for me, I feel like I've always kind of had that side, even in youth hockey, like just being the little brother, just always getting beat, you know, beat up, beat around the house, whatever sport we were playing. It's just, I was, always losing and it just kind of drove me nuts and, and uh, I always try to find ways to do whatever it took to, to win. Even when I was younger, I think that translated to uh, no starting to play when I was young, just no, that physical aspect when we could start hitting, I loved it and always tried to go after the biggest kid growing up. And um, that was kind of the mindset that the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And, and, uh, and I think now with where the game's going, of course, it's, it's great for fans The the speed skill and, and uh, kind of the highlight real stuff that, uh, you know, players are able to do now. But I think what, you know, you've seen in the past, you know, guys like Tom Wilson, I don't think Washington's winning the Stanley cup without, you know, Tom Wilson, the way he plays and, and Dallas with Jamie Ben throughout all these years about what he does for that team. And, and uh, I always think that, you know, guys like that, it's, it's awesome to watch, fun to watch because um, they put their body on the line every day, whether it's practice, games, and they'll do anything for their teammates. Great. You said, Jamie, Ben, we got drafted to Dallas together in 07. And what a great comparison, man. A guy wearing a letter, a guy that has a great shot, can scrap all that. You find it tough to balance these days. And like, especially when you're going up and, you know, let's say there's a big physical team coming into town. You're the type of guy that if you guys go down, let's say three, four, one in a game, and you're like, man, I, I got to get the bench going, or I got to get the fans going. You could do it with a goal. You could do it with a hit. You could do it with a fight. Is that tough for you to kind of balance you've really like kind of remodernized this position like do you are you still getting nervous before games and having to you know carry that weight or maybe having to scrap that night no for me yeah of course still get the nerves um you know going into even this season you got the nerves you know first time with expectations pressure you know individually and, and collectively as a team and and before each game you know a lot of people pay you know their hard work and money that they've you know made over time to come watch you and, and support the team play. And, and you never want to kind of give them a doozy. You always want to make sure you're at your best individually. And, and uh, if everybody on the team does that, then, you know, make the whole city proud. So I think, you know, with everything, of course, there's pressure and, and uh, nerves, but um, I think it's a pretty good opportunity when you have that to be able to, you know, step up and, and uh, do the right thing in the right moment. Yeah. I mean, you definitely did see the direction of the league change multiple times in the 2010s, especially like when the Kings were winning those cups, big, heavy teams. And then we start, we started to see it get really quick, fast, North, South hockey. And you really kind of modernized, you remodernized it. You brought it back, like not single-handedly, but you were one of the few, like, how did you do that? Was it a goal of yours to go into games and be like, I want to be as well-rounded as possible in my game? I definitely think that's been a focus for me is that, no, I definitely think I, you know, I've gotten better, you know, making plays, my skills and, and able to be not, be dynamic offensively. And, and uh, yeah, no, I've always tried to pride myself on 
a player who's just really hard to play against, whether that's physically or, or with a skill set and, and uh, keep getting faster, stronger, that, you know, tougher to, uh, tougher to contain. So um, I think I've got a lot more room to go and a lot more uh, um, areas to keep improving, but that's just, you know, my, my focus each summer is just keep improving in those, my, see my weaknesses to where I can get to a point where I'm, you know, hopefully a real tough guy to play against. Heck, I wouldn't want to play against you, man. Uh, I think it's so cool that you have DJ there. I got to tell you a story, man. When I played in the OHL when I was in Erie, whenever we went into Windsor, we rarely wore up on them. But if we get up 3 or 4-1, every tough guy they had would be coming over the bench and asking me to go, hey, DJ Boogie sent me out here. We got to go. We got to go. So I'm skating with the Jens with the Oshawa Generals when he got the head job there. A couple of years later, I asked him about it, and he goes, fucking right to send guys after you. I wasn't going to let you run around in our building. But I just think that's so cool, man. I never got to play for a head coach like that. That was a tougher guy back when he played. Can you tell me about your relationship with DJ? Yeah, I've got a lot of respect for for DJ. Um, I don't think I'd be, you know, who I am as a player, as a person, as a leader, if it wasn't for DJ and, and everything kind of he's done for myself, but also, you know, the young group here in Ottawa and um, who are becoming, it's it's a big reason because of him. And um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely been some nights where he's like, you ain't going after this guy, this guy, this guy. <laughs> kind of gives a list. He's like, we need you on the ice. But, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think um, you, you give a lot of respect to the guy himself who, um, you know, kind of did it for a living, put his whole, you know, body, you know, blood, sweat, and tears into his teammates and, and trying to uh, protect them and help them out. So um, for him to kind of do that as a coach for now and, 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 and for us, it's he, he's been great for us, you know, past present and definitely in the future as well you seem like you love it you see so you seem so unbothered by the fact that you're just like going out throwing down um does it help a little bit maybe taking a bit of the weight off your shoulders that a guy you've scrapped twice zach McEwen's coming in and because i like you said man like i can see nights where dj wants you to play and like knock on wood something happens right and you get hurt in a scrap like that's not a good look maybe zach can take a bit of the you know, a bit of the heat off you in that respect. Yeah. Well, you know, Max, an awesome guy too. And, and, uh, you know, seeing what he's done for, you know, Philly, LA van and, and, uh, how he's always there to, um, you know, put his body on the line, protect his teammate. Yeah. It's always, you know, it makes me feel more comfortable, but, you know, never would ask somebody else to fight a battle for me. That's just, you know, not who I am to want to put anybody else at risk, um, in different types of situations. But I always have respect for guys who are willing to, you know, drop the gloves and, and um, whether it's, to, you know, set the tone, get get the guys back into it or, or to protect the teammate. But, uh, um, yeah, I've been fortunate to have, you know, a lot of guys over the years who um, have been kind of in that role and, and uh, you know, I'll always appreciate um, what they do for the team. You love it though, eh? Like the last year, the Truba one, I think you said you felt like McGregor walking off. Like you look like you enjoy it, man. And I could, dude, I, I could speak to it too at 170 fights in 11 years or whatever it was for me. Like it was nerve wracking and stressful as hell, but like what a rewarding feeling, like having the boys on your bench stand up and like give you the, give the tap, especially when you're making the skate back out of the penalty box or like someone takes a cheap shot at a teammate and you're able to go out and just beat the wheels off someone. Like it's a pretty rewarding feeling. Does it feel good? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's something you can't even describe to, you know, the normal person. Just yeah, I, yeah it's it's stuff I probably enjoy it too much, but uh, um, but yeah, it's 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 unbelievable. It's kind of that feeling you have in the box, or whether it's in the room, or, or you know, after the game, you're like, all right, just that was that was pretty sweet. And of course, depends on which fight it was. So yeah, uh, yeah, I, I definitely enjoy it. Uh, probably too much but i think it's such a big part of the game that it's uh for guys to do it i can't tell you how excited i get on the bench on the ice it's it's always fires me up dude so i played for uh a gentleman named mike stapleton in junior uh we called him whitey he uh played with your dad in phoenix he got traded there and he told us the story about your dad i got to tell you this he said the first day he got there he was playing first line with your dad and your dad walked over to his stall and said kid i only have two rules number one pass me the puck and number two 
if you get the puck and you don't know what to do with it, just go back to rule number one. <laughs> and <laughs> we were just it. crying. Yeah. But I mean, I know you've talked about your dad so much and you just mentioned him, but I just think that's so cool. Even like you just said, like you have a guy in your corner that you can lean on even for like game analysis situations where if you have a question about a guy or you want to go back over like a shift or something you did in the game, like you have him to lean on like a former legend of the game. Like that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, no, I definitely think Matthew and I have been really lucky to have him, especially not just, you know, an NHL player, but, you know, should be in the Hall of Fame, you know, type career. So, um, yeah, even to this day, we're still getting analysis, you know, preseason. He's given us – he already gave me a, a couple note thing after – I forget what game it was. So, um, we're fortunate to have that kind of extra uh, – I wouldn't say criticism, but analysis where – you know, you get it at the rank from coaches, but to get that kind of outside perspective, even from Matthew as well, it's, um, I think we're pretty lucky to have each other to, you know, balance different things um, off each other, not just on ice play, but also you know, off ice situations with you no know, leadership type things. So I'm, I'm very lucky to have you now my dad, but also my brother as well. What's Big Walt say in preseason? He's already got pre scouts and notes for you. What's he say? Yeah, he says just gotta keep your feet moving when you got the yes. puck coming in the zone. So it's just the typical stuff. He's like, yeah, I think he like got so detailed. He was like at the seventeen minute mark in the second period, come down the right side, you stop moving your feet, and I was like, I know exactly what play you're talking about. Yeah, big boys got to keep the feet moving, man. Yeah. Oh, that's that's amazing. Uh, I want to go back. I don't want to timeline this too much, but like, I love draft stuff. And like, I'll never forget when you got drafted and cause you went to a Canadian squad and like, I grew up in Toronto, obviously battled out Ontario and that stuff. But how did that all work out? Like if I'm redrafting, I'm probably taking you one. I know Rasmus Darlene just signed his big deal, but I'm probably taking you one. Like did did you think you maybe were going to go to Montreal and then they took yes, Barry? Like, did you kind of have an idea or were you just like, man, I'm not kind of, I'm not really sure. To be honest with you, like, I remember that day. I just had no expectations. I had no, yeah. like, I'm a pretty carefree guy. So I was like, you know what, whatever happens meant to happen. I don't, I don't care where I'm going. Like the pressure that comes with it. Like I, I think I was so naive that I didn't even realize like, the pressure that would come with that to go to Canada and like all the media coverage and expectations you already, you know, kind of put on. So, and I remember I didn't even have Twitter at the time where like, I wasn't checking Twitter, but once Montreal kind of were on the clock, I, I, I think the agents like know beforehand. So I kind of didn't get the look around for that. And, and then when Ottawa came, I saw, and our head coach at the time, Guy Boucher, was kind of staring at me the whole time from the table. And then right when they're going up, my you know, agent looked back and kind of just gave me the stare. And, and that's when I kind of knew I was I was going there. But um, I remember that the Ottawa faithful were not happy that they took me at the time. And and to be honest, like, like I said, I didn't have Twitter, so I didn't see any of like the remarks, anything like that. But I guess my mom was on Twitter after, and she was like, oh, my God, he's getting absolutely shredded on Twitter right now. But nobody told me because we had a big party the next two days in, in Dallas. So, And then after the fact that she told me about that as the season started, like, thank God you didn't check Twitter at the time because they weren't too happy. But I think they're happy now. 100% they're happy now. They're more stoked than anything, dude, after seeing what happened and how that draft played out. Honestly, I'm not I'm not uh, arguing for them, but I think it's just we're, we're way more exposed to major junior hockey and just coming from the NCAA, maybe didn't see you see you as much. Can you tell me how I'm, – I'm always obsessed with guys that leave college too. Like how did that all work with BU then at the time? Were you just like Ottawa, uh, obviously you went to training camp. Like can you explain to me how leaving BU and how that all worked at that time? Yeah, so you obviously have to once you sign your your entry level, that means you can't obviously go back to college. So I was actually fighting. Um, I didn't know what to do. I wasn't sure after the draft what I wanted to do because I wouldn't say I had a great year at BU, so I wasn't sure if I would be ready for the NHL level or even you know the AHL level if I didn't make Ottawa. So I was kind of fight with what I wanted to do throughout the whole summer, and of course this is kind of beginning of the rebuild for Ottawa, so they wanted me to. Um, to come and, and kind of uh, get implemented with, you know, whatever, wherever I was playing, uh, Ottawa, Belleville. But, 
Yeah, I, I don't think I decided until mid-August when I was like, yeah, this is too good of an opportunity to – I mean, this is my dream to play in the NHL. So it's um, it was definitely a tough conversation with um, you know, the coaches at BU because I loved my time there. I, I saw my best buddies were there, so it was just tough to leave them. And um, But I knew it was, it was you know, my dream to be in the NHL, so that I had the opportunity, I couldn't pass up on it. Do you hold any sort of personal vendetta, vendetta toward the Habs? Are you like, every time you play them, are you like, I'm going to make you guys regret the day you passed on me? <laughs> I like, I wouldn't say like, it's like the personal vendetta. It's just the battle that we have, like the, the rivalry with Ottawa, Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto. Like, of course, those games, it's, it's kind of bigger than just the teams. It's the communities, the cities that, you know, take so much pride in the teams that, no, almost just do it for them. You want to be your best for them and, and make them proud. So I think it goes bigger than individuals on the ice. It's kind of that whole community and, and represent the community. I feel like the hockey world and all of us, I mean, anyone that even played too, like we want some future like world competition here. Like we want, I know you haven't been able to to do any Olympics. I know you've played some world juniors, but like, how cool would it be to have like the old Canada cup, like a Canada versus us, like call it best four or seven. Cause you guys, I'm not going to lie, are looking stacked, like good goaltending fast. Like the U S team could be for real. You must be begging for some international competition. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think that'd be a dream come true. Um, to be able to have the opportunity to play in a best on best, that'd be, some I'd never forget and, and something that hopefully when the opportunity comes to be able to play with you know, Matthew, that'd be, that'd be pretty amazing. That something we've dreamt about our whole lives. So um, yeah, of course I always went, you know, Stanley cup or first uh, and then winning gold or um, whatever it is for whatever tournament for the U S. So um, yeah, hopefully that gets figured out because I know a lot of guys would like to you know see that and be a part of that. Who's on the top line with you on Team US? And is there anyone you want to go up against? Yeah, of course. If we're just saying, you know, lines, it would be pretty cool to be, you know, left side myself, Matthews in the middle, uh, Matthew on the right. On the other side, go with McDavid, McKinnon, and Crosby. That would be pretty nuts. Yeah, that would be just give me that, that. Give me that matchup. <laughs> be fun to be a part of that. I'm I'm guessing your answer. I got to ask you who wins four or seven. You think the U.S. has taken it or what? Oh yeah, I mean I, I definitely am going to be biased here. It's hopefully uh, um, we'll be on that. So yeah, I think the the U.S. the speed, skill, and the uh, a lot of guys that are hard to play against. That would be uh, definitely be a fun one to watch. That's for sure. Um, you got a new owner coming in here, man. I think that's been one of the biggest storylines about Ottawa. Mike Ann Lauer, funny story from me. He was, so I skate every Monday night in the summer with my dad. He has a bunch of alumni and stuff. They play every Monday night. And so he was a goalie. He plays net. And yeah. so he'd be in there full Habs gear. And I'm telling you right now, Brady, he was the biggest snap show I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like I was playing in the league at the time. So I'd come down and maybe like shoot high. He's like throwing his stick everywhere, dropping F-bombs every time they lost. Just like super competitive, but like, off the ice, very enthusiastic guy. Like I know the owners, some don't play a huge part in it. Like in three years in Edmonton, I saw Daryl Cates maybe two times, but like that must create some sort of like cultural enthusiasm for your team. And like, like a little bit of a pick me up going into the year here. Right. Yeah, no, it's, it's, you know, you love a guy that's got a little snap side to him. Right. So it's uh shows kind of the competitive but yeah, you could already kind of see with no our team already, and, and I know he wasn't the kind of official owner this summer, but now no, it's definitely the first time my experience that we're no at the cap and and have to no battle yeah. against the cap and stuff like that. So that's kind of new to to me. But yeah, I just you just see you know him being around the rank, how much he you know loves the game and and wants to you know wants to win, and I think when everybody's aligned from top to bottom with, you know, one goal. It's, um, it's pretty amazing to be a part of, and I know it's only been a short time, but I'm definitely really excited for what's to come. Uh, you talked a bit about the cap. I got to drop a tweet. So a tweet I, I posted maybe a month ago now, I'm going to read it to you, but 
I'll tell you my my store, my version after. I said, I know Jake Sanderson is a very good hockey player, but 64 mil after 77 NHL games is wild. And I didn't mean any offense to Jake as a player. I was just saying that like, that's just a lot of money for a small amount of NHL games. Because I think an old, I'm not, you know, that old, but an older guy like me is used to seeing guys go through bridge deals. And now it's like, if you have one good year in the league, like the team really does want to lock you up, you know, long term. But I know you've talked about him a lot recently, being the captain and stuff like that. But can you tell me why Jake Sanderson's worth every penny in your mind? Oh, like I, I don't think, know anything about yeah, the kid, Brady. Like yeah. I barely saw him play last year. Yeah. So you got to tell me. Well, I'm really excited for you to watch this kid because he is, you know what? Like he's, he's so such a special player, but just a person as well. And I think they definitely they got him at the right time because I think sky's the limit for him. He's, uh, he's just such a, steady player like people don't notice like everybody always looks at stats and they all like, oh, how many goals assists plus whatever it's the little things that he does like i remember even last game it was a four on three or a five on three for them or it was definitely this preseason five on three they were out there a minute snapping around all of a sudden we got this break where two like just g got the puck you skate one-on-one he's at the net after like a minute shift beat everyone up the ice for two on one and he just missed. And, and it's just like little things like that, that people, if you don't watch him closely, like they will never notice. And they're like, why is he getting paid $8 million just for, you know, 30 something points, but it's the little things that he does. And I truly believe that sky's the limit for him. And I'm excited for, for you to be watching him more closely. Cause you'll be like, okay, they, they got him at a steal in a couple of years. Yeah, it was funny. The first guy replied to me and said, fun fact, it took Jake Sanderson 16 games to match Luke Gazdick's career point totals. And I just replied, <laughs> well, that's really not saying much, man. Uh, <laughs> but is there a comparable in the league, like, or maybe even someone you watched growing up with your dad, someone that you see him being, you know, his ceiling, maybe like, a, I don't even know if you want to say headman, someone, someone like that. Or is he just I like his own player? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like he's, you can kind of look at Makar and like the way I don't, I don't think right now that Sandy's got, you know, the offense, I think, you know what, that's, that's well, I think he's, he's got the trajectory of Makar. So um, I, I think that there's a lot of good things that he does, but I mean, he, I know he, he looks up to, you know, guys like Yossi Makar. Um, he, he's just so good with the puck offensively but he's just a good he's a, he's a great shutdown guy he doesn't give you much with the speed stick and is smart so he's, he's a definitely i'm very lucky to be able to call my teammate wearing the c for a canadian franchise let alone the nation's capital is a huge honor and i know you know that and i know you know the challenges that come with playing in a canadian market and you've just done a hell of a job in carrying that on your shoulders i have a really soft spot for guys that take their time, their effort, their energy, their money away from the rink and give it back to their communities. And I know I saw a bit of something you had, Kachuk's captains with the Boys and Girls Club of Ottawa. Can you talk a bit about that and just kind of some of the initiatives that you have in Ottawa? I just, man, I, I really love guys who do that and give back because you don't have to, right? You you could just go about your way and play hockey and for, for you to do stuff like that is really cool also. You mind talking a bit about some stuff that you you got going on? Yeah. Well, no, Kachuk's captain with the you know, BGC Ottawa. It's you know very important to M and I because – you know, it's, it's it's all about kind of the next generation. And, and you know, I remember as a kid, I had role models that I look up to and I wanted to be like. And and for me to be able to meet some of those role models and, and see who they are, it's um, it's been amazing for me and a great experience for me growing up. And, and that's what I want to be for, you know, the kids in the Ottawa community is somebody that they can look up to and, and try to try to be like. And that's, you know, try to be a good person to everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. Just be me and and treat everybody with respect and and um but now i think also too what makes it so important for us is how just welcoming and the ottawa community has been for me ever since i stepped foot into ottawa and, and uh even everybody a part of the organization made me feel like i was you know part of it right from day one and and i wasn't even making the team at that point yet it was just 
um, a long road to get to where I wanted to get to, but it made me feel like I was, I was at home, not just players, but staff, trainers, everybody. So um, I wanted, when I, once I had the opportunity to do something, I wanted to give back to um, the people that were so supportive of me. Uh, I got to ask you about some pregame X here. Let's talk some hockey stuff, dude. I read or watched a friggin' hilarious thing you had about like the OCD and the cleanliness in your stall. I used to absolutely battle with Ryan Nugent Hopkins. We sat beside each other for three years in Edmonton and I come into the room and he'd have like clear tape and like his supplements in my stall. And I'd be like, Nuge, stop. It's no, it's over. And then it got to the point where I was like caution taping, like clear tape down like the side of my stall. So he couldn't put anything on my side. And I think it's Stutes you sit beside, but like it must have been him saying you have OCD at the rink. Is that just something you like? You like the you like being neat, you like being clean, you like your shit where it is? Yeah, I, I just once to get to the rank, I, I'm not superstitious at all, but everybody's got a routine. So it's like, I you now follow the routine pretty religiously, but it's just, that bugs me so much. It's like, it's just things in my area. I'm like, hey, you got your stall. You can put whatever you want in your stall. You can pile it up as much as you want. Don't think about my stall as a little storage spot. This is my area. I like, I'm good here. I've got a good thing going, so. Yeah, he sometimes put his stick in my stall, like just on my side a little bit to give himself more room. Like, hey, this ain't how it works here. So we, we, we've had some pretty good laughs, battles over it. Just, um, no, but it's, it's been all good. Uh, what's the routine look like? I know, I know, like you say, there's no superstition, but even there's a bit of superstition and not going after your routine. I heard you have to eat asparagus. I was a huge Sperry guy. I love a little couple sticks of asparagus on the yeah. plate pregame, but is it certain um, driving to the rink? Is it same route? Is it same meals? Is it just the order of things you do? No, I just like probably like the only thing that would be close to superstition is like I'm just like I finish my my off-ice warm-up at what, like 24 minutes on the clock? We yeah. have to be out to 16, so – I don't give myself a lot of time from you know, the off ice warm up to change to get into my gear and then get on the ice. So, but like a lot of things I could, I mean, chick, I have chicken parm for pretty much every one of my meals just because I like, I feel like that's just the ordinary meal for a hockey player. So I, I wouldn't say like I'm pretty loose and carefree that if something came up, like, oh, all right, whatever, I'll just do this. But um, yeah, I'd say probably my warm up and I kind of not give myself much time would be, I'd say my most superstitious thing, but it's all routine that um, just, I like how I feel after you touch that ice cream bar on the road or what? Oh, I stay away from it. Cause <laughs> when, once I get into that habit, then it could be a slippery slope. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to put the X on ice cream and cookies at meal that I could save it for, for different types of things. Uh, I want to go out a bit off the board here and ask you uh, a bit about your boy, Stoney. Um, the preseason stuff with Hodgson, when he took a run at him, like say what you want about the hit, but I actually just loved how he came out in the media and had the adrenaline running and spoke his mind, man. Like you rarely see guys after games, like really tell the cameras how they feel. And like, I loved it. And whether like, whether you thought the hit was clean or not or what, whatever you liked about the situation. I love that Stoney just came out and was like so brutally honest about the situation. I guess, is that like the type of guy he is? And like, I guess the more general question is like, do you like that too? Like I like seeing guys with a little bit of fire after, I know you've been a little worked up and wound up every now and then, but you, you must love that too. Cause guys are generally so stoic all the time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, I think everybody knows Stoney, like on the ice, just gets so fired up, you know, goal, whatever fight that he's just, he's an emotional guy. And and of course, when that happened, I think he was, of course, definitely worked up. And I, and I just talked to him after he definitely, I think had a little regret after because he didn't want it to be like that big of a deal. And, yeah. and, all, and he let the adrenaline kind of take over. But I mean, like you said, it it's the personality that you have that sometimes guys get carried away of just giving a generic answer. So once somebody kind of speaks their mind and almost gets past like that stoic normal answer is it, it is good for the game because then you, I don't, I don't know. You just, it's just, you show who you are. It's not like you're kind of hiding your, your personality. It's, it's, you are who you are. It doesn't matter who you are. If it's 
media fans, fellow teammates, like that's who you are. So it's just, I think now in that situation it might've been different. Cause now I think he had regret after, but for other times it's, it's, I think it's good when, um, you no know, guys kind of show their emotion and who they are. Got to look uh, to the upcoming year here, man. It is exciting times in Ottawa, dude. Like with the emergence of you and Stutes and bringing Vladdy in, I know you lost to bring it, but you had a legitimate number one goaltender in, in Corpy and a full year of Chikrin who, oh my goodness, is a player back there. Um, even watching in preseason, I'm just like, dude, where has this guy been? I know like he sat out a bit for last year and whatever, but you must be fired up leading the charge here coming into the year. Like rebuilds over buddy. Like it's time for the Ottawa senators to, to jump in not only a wild card spot here, but jump in and make a little bit of a playoff push. You must be fired up to get this thing going. Hey. Yeah. It was a long preseason just of course want to, but kind of the focus is different for me personally. It's um, no preseason. It was like all of whatever I could do to just get my body mind right for the season. And I feel like I've, no, I'm really ready for what's coming. And, and um, I know the group as a whole, our, our goals, visions all aligned right now. And, and uh, yeah, we've been, at, we've been chomping at the bit to get going here. Well, man, I know, uh, I know what this time of year, this time of year is like. So I really like genuinely from the bottom of my heart, want to thank you for coming on, man. I had to ask you one time. I literally texted and said, Hey man, you want to come on the pod? And you said, sure, let's go. Let's do it. So thanks for taking the time out of your day, man. And best of luck this year. All, all, all the best for you in the sense. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, hopefully we'll see you soon.